Hey everyone, and welcome back to the beginning of a brand new town. There's a lot to explain, so let's get through the intro and into the time lapse. Alright everybody, so like I said, this video marks the beginning of a little series for a town by the name of Theroncrest. The town began shortly after the Verizian Empire claimed Aeslung's land and began building the capital city. The name Theroncrest came from a family of royals who sat at the court of the king who gifted the land to their son under the condition that the town may never leave Aeslung's control and that it must provide food as well as a monthly tax. Because of this arrangement, the land has been passed down through two generations and still holds very faithfully to that agreement, ensuring a peace between the two entities. The design of this town is very reminiscent of older English architecture, with the majority of roofing being that of thatch and foundations made of stone, while wood beams and supports comprise the middle sections. I got a lot of inspiration from both Assassin's Creed and Kingdom Come Deliverance, and I believe you'll really be able to see that in the build. And for any of you who have not played either of those games, um, they're definitely really great. Um, and Assassin's Creed Valhalla is where I get most of this inspiration. So uh, I just started Kingdom Come Deliverance. Absolutely loving it. Just FYI. Uh, but this mini series actually really should only last about four to six episodes. So it won't take up too much time on the channel. Afterwards, I really plan on continuing working on Aeslung and other areas around the map. I'm actually thinking about maybe revamping the entire map to accommodate the new blocks in Conquest Reforged 1.15 from 1.12, uh, like pretty much stripping down a lot of the buildings and interiors and completely revamping them. But of course, let me know if I should do that because that's actually going to be a lot of work. And I think it'll be fun, but you know, we'll see. Uh, anyways, if you have any ideas on what buildings I should be adding to the town, let me know in the comments because I really honestly always love getting ideas from you guys. But I think that's enough talking for now. Let's turn up some music and I'll meet you again for the walkthrough. enjoyed that time lapse and the video and you know we obviously got a lot uh, built so there's a lot to show you but I'm gonna try not to take forever um, but this is the new city of Theroncrest and you can see here it's situated right on the other side of this bay 
uh, from Aeslung. Uh, as part of that lore, you know, it, it obviously makes sense that this location would be here. But uh, I just wanted to kind of take you on a quick tour. So there's multiple avenues you could take. Uh, and the whole city is going to be structured on different levels and things like that. But obviously we're going for a much more like older uh, English vibe on this one with the theme. Uh, with the new trees, I love the way they look in 1.15 uh, 1, 1, Conquest. It's just phenomenal. But anyways, um, here we go. And let's just start off here. So going straight into the town, you can see we have the four houses here. Or really three houses and one storage area. Uh, right off the bat, we have this. And this is where you could tie up your horses. There's some water for them. And just, you know, allow them to have some shade after a long journey. Uh, I think it really adds a little bit of, of you know, realism there. Uh, we have a water trough in case, you know, you're trying to clean some clothes or you want to drink out of if it's clean, <laughs> whatever the case may be, uh, it is available. So what we're going to do is we're going to go into this first house uh, on the right. And I just kind of want to show you uh, how the layouts are. So these houses, I kept them very simplistic with the inspiration from Assassin's Creed and Kingdom Come Deliverance. Uh, I decided to go with a different kind of interior build on these and I think it came out really well. So obviously right here we have a small kitchen, uh, just enough, you know, to boil some soup or uh, some meat, you know, to cook it. On this side we have some ingredients, some shelvings, just basic stuff like that. Uh, this banner, I <laughs> just, I don't know, it's a banner, it's there. Um, but going in you have this little dining area. Once again we have some brooms, a little wash bucket, uh, things like that some storage space here so these are barrels you know you could pop them open and go into them uh, and you know just some shelving some herbs hanging out to dry uh, looks like they're eating drinking a little bit here uh, but once again I just wanted to kind of add that you know that realism and the basic necessities that a town like this would have but going into the actual stone part of it, uh, kind of like a tower, uh, you can see here making use of the new blocks for like outline, shelving, things like that. Um, we have, you know, fruit baskets and whatnot. And this little spot here, we actually have a cellar. So just a small little food cellar for drinks and additional food items uh, so they don't perish as quickly. You know, um, and so they don't go bad. They stay good just a little bit longer since it's away from any heat or cold. Um, it would kind of be tucked away there. And then going up here, we actually have the stairs, which I, I do think is kind of cool. I used some of the new blocks as like supports. Uh, you can see them there and there we have three supports. And going up here, we actually have the, uh, you know, bedroom, essentially. And uh, this, this thing keeps changing colors. It's kind of goofy but there you go uh, but we have multiple beds we have like a small cabinets for clothing things like that three beds lots of natural lighting to come in I think it's a very good area lots of shelving up here as well uh, but this room kind of just ties together it looks really clean in my opinion um, even though it is kept simple and it just came out really well so this this is actually my favorite house out of this entire build I really like the support column as well uh, but what we're going to do is, of course, not take 20 minutes to tour. And what we'll do is we'll go here before we check out the other house. So, of course, we have like a cart full of some hay. Um, we actually have a little pathway here that goes to a small cabbage area. And then if we're going to go down here, you can see some, you know, buckets. We have some fodder. But if you open up this thing, I just threw this little Easter egg in. Uh, looks like we have some bones. That's supposed to be blood. It's it's redstone powder. But um, this is where someone was killed, and they threw them down here and let them decompose, and they tucked it away with, you know, covering it with fodder and some, you know, wood and all that other stuff to where no one's any of the wiser. Uh, so it's, you know, random little Easter egg kind of going around, but it is what it is. Uh, here we have the second house on the left. And when you come up, you can see they have a nice little outdoor patio area. They're playing some Gwent, uh, <laughs> you know, and uh, got a nice little ale in the on the porch there. But going on in, we immediately walk into the bedroom. And once again, using use of the new 1.15 blocks, we did lots of shelving, uh, cabinetry, just stuff like that, kind of all over the place here. And... Of course, going into this, since the house is very small, it's very condensed, so there's really no dining area. They just kind of, you know, eat however. And so we have some kind of like a pantry, some shelving here, and some more like uh, vases that would be full of herbs and things like that. And then, of course, tucked away is also another 
uh, furnace area in which they could cook and it's right next to the window so all the steam and smoke could easily go out if not there would be small holes in the ceiling in order to accommodate that and kind of you know keep the house smoke free so or as smoke free as possible <laughs> but you know, once again very basic very simple housing I tried not to do anything ridiculous or overly complicated and I think it actually came out well so what we're gonna do is we are gonna be uh, go through here and this is where the gardening is so of course each house is gonna have gardens they're gonna have um, their own you know mode of or their own way of feeding themselves uh, on top of the tax and the produce that they need to supply to a slung they would obviously have to feed themselves so this is actually a storage building but you can see here it wraps all the way around and a nice little garden right in this area here full of multiple different crops i believe that is potatoes or carrots and that is something or another so i'm not sure but anyways we have a little bit of uh, environment here you know some ambiance and i uh, have the clothes hanging up because who doesn't love seeing wet clothes and then we're gonna go up here and go into the actual storage house itself. So as soon as you walk in, you could take a left or you could take a right. Now, all of this is simply storage. No one lives here, no one sleeps here, no one eats here, nothing. This is all just a good area f for them to hoard the additional supplies, mainly that they would give to Aislung so they're kept in good pristine condition. So when they are handed over, there's no issues, no qualms, nothing like that. So. Um, <clears throat> but here we have all of this and if you turn around and you go left this is another really nice area um, I tried to make it very packed full of supplies you know we have some firewood and things like that here uh, left inside the building so they remain dry lots of um, you know beer ale whatever you want to call it uh, in here and I use that little frame to kind of hold them in place Plenty of meats and fish hanging up, herbs hanging up to dry. We have a small little table in which they can do inventory and kind of, you know, do all that good stuff. And then, of course, plenty of produce uh, for them to bring over there. So that is the little storage area. I really like the way that it came out. It seems really interesting. It's a unique design having like stone, wood, and then stone again. But I like the way that it came out. And, uh, I, you know, I was kind of winging these designs as I was building them, but... They came out pretty cool, and I'm really happy about that. So what we're going to do now is, of course, we're going to go on to the final house. And this is something that came straight from Kingdom Come Deliverance. I like the the drying racks here. Um, you know, really be able to do that. I think it really came out well. So uh, I actually love this design. I believe I'm going to incorporate it more often. So, you know, we do have that. And so this house actually has two entrances. I'll bring you into the first one. So right here is the actual living quarters, of course. And you walk in, once again, same thing. Got the small little kitchen area, a very small dining room, which goes straight into the bedroom. So all of these houses are meant to be structured in a very open way. Uh, they don't have separate rooms or anything like that. This is not an ultra wealthy area, but they do well for themselves. But this is just a style that I decided to build it in, and I will continue to build it in. But I like the way this came out. We have, you know, once again, the bed, some boots, just some storage chests, just simple stuff that really ties in the entire room. And um, I think it really, you know, brings the whole scene together. Um, over here, beyond all the grass, we have a fence that kind of outlines the area. And we're going to take this pathway down all the way around. And this is the bottom part of the house, which is going to be a wine cellar. So we have a little grindstone there. If, you know, they're sharpening up their sharpening up their tools for any gardens or any sorts for self-defense, just basic stuff like that. And then, of course, like I said, we have more barrels. Some are broken down due to you know uh, degrading over time. And we have this really awesome wine rack here, uh, in which you know whenever they feel like it, they can have a have a good bit enough for the whole town really and truly or at least this section of the town uh but i really like this wine cellar i think it came out really well and then we're going to keep going and we obviously have some more decorations this leads to nowhere because there's a small fence but um either way we're going to leave that be and then of course we have this whole area for wheat so let me kind of give you a, an overview again of the whole thing so kind of looking at it now you can see the the design i'm going for like i said very multi-layered 
Um, it's not just flat ground is what I typically do. And I'm really trying to change that around and, and switch things up. So this is the entire area and it's going to grow. I mean, this, this village is act or this town is actually going to be pretty expansive. Uh, but it's all going to keep this general theme with a few buildings that stick out, like maybe a richer, uh, merchant shop or something like that. So that's pretty much where we are. This is a good start. I think Theron. Theroncrest is going to be a really awesome town and I think we're really going to you know make good use of it so anyways thank you again so much for tuning in I really appreciate you know y'all watching this video give me some ideas once again of you know some things that uh, I can add on some different buildings or maybe some ideas you have to make the landscape or maybe some more hidden easter eggs and things like that in these builds I would love to hear from them and I love doing you know the stuff that the community uh, would like to see so Anyways, thank y'all again for watching this video. This is, of course, the Legendary Porpoise signing off. I hope all of y'all have a good day and happy gaming.